A lab carrying out experiments on dogs recently shut down. Prisoners strapped with cages of mosquitoes and injected with chemicals. Bacteria clouds released over an entire city. These are dangerous experiments that were quietly shut down. This is one of the most recent shutdowns, and it's been controversial for years. For decades, the National Institutes of Health ran experiments using beagles, mainly for studies involving sepsis and infectious disease. The dogs would be deliberately infected, restrained, and monitored as their bodies reacted. Beagles were used because they're docile, easy to handle, and unlikely to fight back. Animal welfare groups had been calling this out for years, saying the experiments were just disgusting, and not only that, the outcome wasn't even worth it, because they didn't even translate well to human medicine anyway. When photos from inside the lab started circulating online, it caused outrage, especially once people realized these weren't old studies, this was still happening. In May 2025, the NIH quietly confirmed that it had shut down its last in-house Beagle laboratory on its main campus. Apparently, they're shifting toward modern alternatives. One of those alternatives is AI modeling, so using computer simulations to predict how a disease or treatment might behave instead of testing it on animals first. That's a good use of AI. I'm all for that. In the late 90s, gene therapy was being hyped as the future of medicine. The idea was to use a modified virus to deliver healthy genes into someone's body. In 1999, the University of Pennsylvania was running one of these trials for a rare liver disorder called this. An 18-year-old named Jesse Gelsinger volunteered. He wasn't dying. His condition was being managed with medication, but researchers wanted data from someone with a milder case. Well, four days after receiving the gene therapy injection, Jesse was dead. His immune system went into overdrive, reacted violently, and his organs failed. His brain swelled. There was nothing doctors could do. What made this worse was what investigators found afterward. The trial had already shown serious side effects in other participants that just wasn't properly reported. Jesse didn't meet all the safety criteria to be enrolled in the first place, and the consent forms did not clearly spell out how dangerous this could actually be. The FDA immediately shut down the trial and froze multiple gene therapy studies across the country. This one flew completely under the radar for decades. From the early 60s into the mid-70s, researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, were running experiments on inmates at the California Medical Facility in Vacaville. Now, these were not sick patients looking for treatment. They were being used because they were easy to access and had very little power to say no. The experiments involved rubbing pesticides and herbicides directly onto their skin, injecting chemicals into their veins, and strapping cages of live mosquitoes to their arms to see how insects reacted to human bodies. It was basic exposure testing, the kind of thing companies wanted data on. The men were paid small amounts of money, but investigations later showed that proper consent forms were missing or incomplete, and many prisoners likely didn't understand the risks at all. The reason this finally stopped was because California banned medical experimentation on prisoners in 1977, following growing outrage over how inmates were being used nationwide. But it was only recently that the University of California, San Francisco admitted the research was unethical and formally apologized. In November 2018, a relatively unknown Chinese scientist named Ha Jinkui suddenly announced that he'd created the world's first genetically edited infants. Not embryos in a lab, actual living humans. He used CRISPR, a gene editing tool. You can snip out a piece of DNA and try to replace it with something else. It's powerful, but it's also risky, especially because we still don't fully understand all the side effects. He claimed he edited embryos to disable a gene called CCR5, which is involved in HIV infection. The idea was to make them resistant to HIV. The problem is, though the father already had HIV, the risk of passing it on was already extremely low with existing medical treatments, so there was really no urgent medical reason to be doing this. The embryos were implanted and twin girls were born. There was a ton of backlash. Other scientists weren't just uncomfortable, they were furious. He'd worked in secret, he'd skipped proper oversight, used consent forms that were misleading at best, and experimented on humans in a way most countries had explicitly banned. There's also the scary part people don't talk about. Editing one gene can accidentally affect others. CCR5 is linked to immune response, 
and even brain development. And once those twins were born, there was no undo button. Chinese authorities shut everything down. His lab was closed, his research was halted, and in 2019, Ha Zhengkui was sentenced to three years in prison for illegal medical practices. He was also fined and banned from continuing this kind of research. In the 60s, the US military ran Project 112. And one branch of it was called SHAD, which stood for Shipboard Hazard and Defense. The goal was to see how chemical and biological agents would affect people. Sailors and Marines were placed on ships or in controlled areas and exposed to different chemicals. Some were incapacitating, it caused vomiting, respiratory issues, or disorientation. The military often told participants it was routine training, so most didn't know exactly what they were being exposed to. The experiments were done repeatedly, sometimes with different chemicals or varying levels of exposure. Researchers monitored the men closely, recording how their bodies reacted to each agent. Over the years, many veterans reported health problems down the line. Chronic fatigue, migraines, respiratory issues, cognitive problems, and they believe they were caused by these experiments. At the time, the program was classified, and the scope wasn't really known. It wasn't until decades later after investigations and veterans speaking out that the program was finally acknowledged. Declassified documents revealed thousands of participants were involved. Some of them ended up receiving compensation. In 2010, a team of researchers led by American scientist Felisa Wolf-Simon published a paper claiming to have found bacteria that could build DNA using arsenic instead of phosphorus. Normally, phosphorus is essential for DNA and life as we know it, so this is quite the claim. It would mean life could exist in a way completely different from everything we know. The bacteria were found in Mono Lake, California, a super salty lake with high levels of arsenic. The news spread almost immediately, but other labs quickly tried to repeat the experiment and no one could get the same results. So they figured the samples had either been contaminated or the data was misinterpreted. Within a few months, the journal Science officially retracted the paper because the results just couldn't be trusted. And the authors admitted they had overinterpreted their findings. Even though no one was physically harmed here, this is an example of you know, a high-profile experiment being shut down because the data didn't hold up. And other scientists who had cited the work or planning follow-up experiments didn't end up doing them, so the retraction caused a lot of confusion. In 2025, the US government officially banned the nonprofit lab Echo Health Alliance and its former president, Peter Daszak, from getting any federal research money for five years. The problem was that the lab had been doing experiments on coronaviruses found in bats and some of the work involved changing the viruses in ways that could make them more likely to spread or behave differently, something scientists call gain-of-function research. These types of experiments are risky, so there are very strict rules about reporting exactly what you're doing and how you're keeping it safe. Investigators found that Echo Health Alliance hadn't properly reported these experiments to federal authorities and didn't have all the required safety documentation in place. Because the lab depends heavily on government grants, Losing federal funding basically meant most of their projects had to stop immediately. In September 1950, at the height of Cold War paranoia, the US Navy carried out something that sounds unbelievable today. A biological warfare experiment over a major American city without telling anyone it was happening. A Navy minesweeper ship steamed around two miles of the San Francisco coast releasing clouds of bacteria called Serratia marsets and Bacillus glabigi. Supposedly, they weren't trying to infect people. They were trying to see how a cloud of bacteria would spread in a real urban environment. Over the next week, the Navy set up sampling stations all over the city and surrounding suburbs to track where the bacteria went. Based on what they collected, nearly every one of the city's roughly 800,000 residents would have inhaled millions microscopic particles during the test period. Again, nobody in the population knew this was happening, because who the hell would sign off on it? Now, at the time, Serratia marcinens was thought to be pretty benign, but a little over a week later, 11 people showed up at Stanford Hospital with very rare urinary tract infections. Doctors identified the bacteria with its distinctive red pigment. One patient, a man recovering from prostate surgery, later died of a serious infection that doctors said was very likely caused by the bacteria. It wasn't until 1969 that President Nixon ordered the US to end 
offensive biological weapons research, but the public didn't learn about sea spray specifically until 1976 when it came out in congressional hearings and reports. That's been the video for today. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically next time.